Welcome, uh, Joe Volpe, the publisher of Corriere Canadese, North America's only Italian language daily newspaper, on behalf of Go Live TV and Corcan Media Group, with our comment of the day. In fact, it's the editorial of the day, and it concerns what we have seen and are seeing and following happening in the United States with the Supreme Court confirmation hearing before the Senate Committee of the Judiciary. Now, there's changes as we go along. But the theme that comes up is, quote, Caesar's wife must be above suspicion. Now, the ongoing debate in the United States concerning the Senate confirmation of Supreme Court Judges, Justice nominee Brett Kavanaugh has taken on a salacious yet decidedly moralistic turn. Commentators are using language that has almost passed into disuse. Some of that debate has conjured up moral issues of a sexual nature and an ethical nature as they pertain to the character and the national ethos. It's mildly surprising, given that on the surface at least, American society is by and large a tolerant, anything-goes environment. Not unlike the ancient Roman Republic on which the United States modeled itself. Even there, then, as now in the USA, a collective sense of what was and is acceptable surfaced or surfaces just to keep people honest. Julius Caesar, who was reputed by his critics to be every woman's husband and every man's wife, divorced his own wife, Pompeia, justifying the decision with a quote made famous by none other than William Shakespeare. Caesar's wife must be above suspicion. Pompeia had attended a wild party hosted by one of his lieutenants, a certain Claudius Pulcher, in brackets, I guess we'd say the good looking one, who had a reputation of organizing over the top orgies. She had smoked, but didn't inhale, so to speak, very much like President Clinton's sortie into marijuana use again, so to speak. But some people, because of the office they hold or aspire to hold, must be held to a higher standard than mere mortals. The closer one is to the office holder, the more stringent the demand. By all accounts, Judge Kavanaugh is a competent enough professional. He has certainly conducted himself that way under the grilling of the, of the senators. He may even be the best candidate available. People have pointed out the connection he has with other uh, Supreme Court justices. President Trump certainly thinks he is the most competent candidate. Kavanaugh will be a Supreme Court judge for the rest of his life, if confirmed. How will he adjudicate? What non-law related experiences will influence his thought process in an environment that today are more exacting than those in which he matured as an individual and a professional. The confirmation process has turned out to be more of a challenge than initially thought. It has become very personal. A former acquaintance of his from 36 years ago, when she was 15 and he was 17 years of age, alleged that he had committed sexual assault on her. She now a married university professor, has passed a lie detector test on that allegation. Others have surfaced. Anyway, should the first um, allegation be disqualified? Or should Kavanaugh, as a result of that, that allegation, be disqualified? His supporters say that the only thing he's guilty of is being a typical teenage boy unsophisticated in the art of seduction, but impatient and testosterone heavy and striking out. In other words, the old boys will be boys defense. He didn't know any better then. But at least there's a debate. Two current Caesars are unfazed by all of this. They've invoked the same that was then and this is now defense. As an older boy, thanks to his wife's definition, Donald Trump is a misogynist. 
He did worse than Kavanaugh and got himself elected as president. Prime Minister Trudeau, accused of groping, survived that incident and reputed others to get to where he is. He holds some of his caucus colleagues to a higher standard. Former MP and Cabinet Minister Vic Taves made it to the bench in Manitoba despite his zipper problems with a former youthful babysitter whom he later married. Maybe Canadians are more tolerant of who aspires to the bench. They shouldn't be, is the suggestion coming out of the American Senate Judiciary Committee. Justices of the Supreme Court are not like politicians. They must be above reproach. Current Supreme Court Justice Russell Brown in Canada must be happy he wasn't subjected to the same scrutiny when Stephen Harper appointed him to the Supreme Court. Justice Brown had carelessly written how he could not imagine a country run by the likes of Joe Volpe or Justin Trudeau. I've never had interactions with him, but I'm flattered that expressing a dislike for me personally proved to be the tipping point in his favor with the then Prime Minister. I'm willing to wager that some sharp lawyers are combing the records to see if he has recused himself from deliberating on any cases contesting legislation involving Justin Trudeau's government. If he hasn't, they'll keep a watchful eye in the future. Americans, their partisanship aside, want to be clear how Judge Kavanaugh will lean on issues touching upon sexual behavior, empowerment of women, gender issues, and so on. Or how often he'll have to recuse himself from those decisions. Now, as we made these comments, as I said, there has been another uh, witness come forward making similar allegations. Will it be worthwhile to appoint him to the bench? Joe Volpe for Corriere Canadese, Go Live TV, and Corcan Media Group bidding you thank you for watching, following us on social media, and asking you to watch in Italian. But on a good news side, our editor of the Portuguese commentary just became a grandfather of a beautiful little girl a few hours ago. Congratulations to Mr. Lima and his wife Alzira.